Why would anyone 3D print flower pots? Is what you might be thinking seeing this video. You can buy clay pots relatively cheaply in your local flower shop. However, there are many cool tricks that 3D printing enables when it comes to gardening. From self-watering planters and inserts, to propagating stations, avocado boats, to grow light holders and oddly shaped pots, to interesting plant supports and pots that also work as an art piece, to IoT projects and smart planters. As it usually is with 3D printing, your imagination is the limit. With traditional pots, it's not easy to guess how much water your plants need. Having a planter with holes on the bottom and a tray beneath it makes it a lot easier. If the tray is empty, you know that the plant needs watering soon. And maybe more importantly, it's nearly impossible to overwater the plant, because the water has an escape route. The downsides are that A. You might not like the way it looks, especially indoors, and B. It doesn't really solve the problem of you having to actively water the plant quite often, unless you buy or print a really big tray. That's where self-watering planters come in. It's basically the same concept, but instead of a planter and a tray, it has two shells with a cavity in between them, which works as a water reservoir. The outside shell must be watertight. On the other hand, the inside shell is not, and it pulls the water from the reservoir through small holes or with the help of a wick. The capacity of the reservoir can typically be quite big, so you only need to fill it about once a week and the plant just continuously pulls the perfect amount of water upwards. Yes, there are plants that do not like self-watering planters, for example cacti, but most of them do, especially herbs, tropical plants or vegetables. You can download this self-watering planter from Prusa Printers. Links for all of the models in this video will be in the video description and in the linked blog article. Commercially available self-watering planters can be quite expensive and the selection is pretty limited, so here you might even save some money by printing one. What's cool is that you can use a traditional pot as the outer shell and print just the self-watering insert. Trying to buy one that would fit your pot perfectly would be very difficult. But with 3D printing, you can just rescale the model in the slicer to the correct size. And that actually leads us to point number two. Make it the perfect size. One of the biggest advantages of 3D printing pots is that you can make them in any shape and size you want. Instead of going to several shops only to buy a traditional round pot that just sort of fits where you need it to, you can print a rectangular pot that will fit perfectly between your double windows or on your windowsill. Not only can we print the pots in any size, but also in any shape that we want. Sure, we try to avoid using supports, but other than that, the possibilities are nearly endless. You can go for a classy look or do a fun twist of an object from your favorite movies or a game. Either way, you'll end up with an unusual pot that becomes a great conversation topic every time a fellow green thumb visits your home. When you're printing the pot, you can pick any of the available filament colors. The selection is really huge these days, so matching the color of your pots and the color of your curtains, couch or a painting is easy. And some filaments, like our Prusa Galaxy Black, have a distinct look that you simply won't find in any gardening store. You can emboss or deboss labels to your plant pots or simply plant small standalone labels if you have a bigger garden. Depending on where you live and the plants that you own, you might want to consider experimenting with some grow lights. They often have a characteristic purple color, since the most important wavelengths for plants are blue and red. You can get them in various forms, but our favorite is good old LED strip. Generally, you shouldn't leave grow lights on 24-7, 
Plants need a light dark cycle to develop properly. But you can buy a cheap plug-in timer switch or a smart switch to have the lights automatically turn off for a few hours during the night. Like all artificial light sources, grow lights also generate heat. So it's best to place them in an aluminum LED profile, which will provide passive cooling for them. We designed a simple holder for such LED profile, which attaches to a planter box. We split the sides into multiple segments, which enables us to quickly adjust the height of the light as the plant grows. You'll find the finished model on Prusa printers, but in this case it's probably best to download the original drawing and modify it a little bit for your planter box and for your LED profile. Growing a plant from leftover fruit seeds will give it a fun backstory. However, with some plants like avocados and mangoes, this can be quite the challenge. If you search for a guide online, you'll most likely end up sticking a bunch of toothpicks in the pit and partially submerging it in water. However, you'll have to continuously keep refilling it and the pit will be less and less submerged over time. And it can often take weeks before the sprouting happens. 3D printing to the rescue. If you print a boat for the pit, it will be submerged the same way the whole time. As the water evaporates, the boat will simply go lower as well. And once you move the plant into soil, you can simply reuse the boat for your next sprouting project. What's maybe even more fun is to pick a plant that will produce more fruits when homegrown. All you need is one chili pepper that you like, crush it, extract the seeds, and then you can fill small 3D printed cups with soil for the one seed. Those are made from Prusa Mint PG Neon Green. You can either germinate the seeds in a wet paper towel or you can do it directly in the soil. You could print the seed starter, which is basically a small greenhouse, but in this case it probably makes more sense to just buy cheap of the shelf one. You can see more grow lights in action here, and also you can see why we don't print LED holders from PLA. It will deform because of the heat. And then we just let nature do its thing. Plant propagation is a million year old life hack. You can cut an existing plant, place it in water for a few days or weeks, and it will start growing roots. You can use just an ordinary glass to propagate your plants. However, just like with avocados, the water will evaporate rather quickly. The plant will also move a bit as it tries to orient itself towards the sun, and sometimes this can lead to a leaf getting submerged and rotting away. Lastly, because glass exposes all of the water to direct sunlight, algae will start growing in it. None of these is really a big problem, but it does leave some space for improvement. You can print yourself a fancy propagating station. It has a big water reservoir and a few slots for net cups. These printed cups can be filled with rock wool or a similar medium and they'll hold the plant nicely straight up. As a finishing touch, you can add a few grow LEDs to the top. The height of the top arch is adjustable by insertable standoffs. As always, you'll find the model on Prusa printers. If you like playing with Arduino and other electronics, there are a lot of fun projects that include plants. You can start with monitoring the soil humidity and changing the color of a flower pot stand. If you use a board with networking capability, such as the ESP8266, you can log the values online and send fun emails. You could even add a small water pump that will automatically water the plant when needed. There are many uses for 3D printing in combination with plants, and we just glanced over some of them. If you've already used 3D printing for a gardening project, we'd love to see pictures of your prints, so take us on Twitter. And if you haven't, the growing season is just starting, so why not give it a shot? Happy printing! <laughs>